Do you want to start using effects pedals with your acoustic guitar, but you're worried you're going to get the wrong one, or you simply don't know where to start? Well, worry no more, because on today's show, I'm going to share with you my six favorite acoustic guitar effects pedals. Six must-have acoustic guitar effects pedals. Not only will you see these effects pedals, you're going to hear them in action. So when you go to get your own effects, you'll know exactly what you want. Hey TAC family, welcome to episode 186 of the Acoustic Tuesday Show. This show is all about bringing fun, focus, and progress to your guitar journey through my weekly Guitar Geek list, plus success stories from your fellow TAC members. Quick question for you. How many times have you pledged to learn the guitar? Well, today, you're going to learn how to make this time stick, no matter how many false starts you've had in the past. In fact, TAC member Marsh M is going to share her secret as to why she's finally sticking with it this time after quite a few false starts. You're also going to get your weekly dose of acoustic guitar news you can use, which includes a movie related to today's topic, plus a major milestone from one of my new favorite guitar manufacturers, plus much, much more. In fact, I've got quite the list for you today. But first, go ahead and strap on your seatbelt, put your helmet on, because we're going to step into a world where a acoustic guitar rarely wanders. The world of effects pedals. Let's go ahead and dig in. The world of effects pedals can be overwhelming, confusing, and downright intimidating. So here's how I'll approach such an unruly topic so you can get some good information out of it that you can apply to your own guitar journey. I'm going to share with you six of my favorite acoustic guitar effects. For each effect, I'll give you the generic name, what it actually does to your guitar's signal, and then I'll share with you a pedal that I like in that category. Oh, and you'll be able to hear each and every effect as well. Now, with this information, I want you to make the best choice for you and your guitar needs. I think these are must-have guitar effects, but the last thing I want for you is to go out and get a bunch of effects that you never use. So this will give you a nice broad brush stroke of effects that can actually be really fun and unlock some creative potential for you and your guitar. Acoustic guitar effect number one is reverb. Of all the effects I'm about to mention, I think reverb is an absolute must have, period, end statement. Reverb makes you sound big, it makes you sound powerful, it gives your guitar body and roominess, and that's actually what reverb is. It makes you sound like you're playing in a larger room. So I'm about to run my guitar through each of these reverb pedals. The first one here is a Strymon Flint, which has another effect I'll mention here in a little bit. And the other one is an Afterneath pedal by Earthquaker Devices. This one's a little bit of an oddball, but truly, truly fun. First, I'm gonna play the guitar dry, meaning no effects applied whatsoever. And then I'll engage the reverb so you can actually hear what it does. Acoustic guitar effect number two, delay. Delay essentially mimics whatever you're playing on your guitar. If you've ever been to a cave and you shout into a cave, that's delay. You shout, yeah, and it goes, yeah, 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 yeah. That's delay. Now, delay can enter you into one of the most incredible time warps you've ever experienced with your guitar, meaning a 10-minute playing session can very well turn into an hour quite easily. In fact, one of my favorite things to do with delay is play single notes and experiment with scales. There's something about those scale notes coming back at you that makes it sound much cooler than just simply playing a scale note by note. I'm not describing it very well. Let me go ahead and play it so you can actually hear what delay sounds like. Now, one of the most acoustic guitar friendly delays that I've ever experienced is the LR Bags Align Series delay. It's easy to use, it doesn't have a bunch of features, but it does delay very well. Acoustic guitar effect number three, now this one's for the slow songs, is tremolo. Tremolo is essentially a regular volume dip in your guitar's signal. It's almost as if you're talking into a fan. That's essentially what tremolo is. And I say that it is a slow song must. 
because you can strum a single chord and let it ring out with that tremolo effect, and it has such an incredible impact on the whole vibe of the song, the whole tone of your rhythm guitar. I think this is a rhythm guitar must and something that every acoustic guitarist should have in their effects arsenal. It can really make a huge emotional impact on a song. Now, my favorite tremolo is the Flint Strymon, and this just so happens to be paired with a really juicy reverb. Now, you're just gonna hear the tremolo on this demo, and I can assure you, once you hear this, you're gonna be knocking down the door to your local music shop to get yourself a tremolo because it is so darn cool. Acoustic guitar effect number four, chorus. Do you like the sound of your acoustic guitar? Do you wish there was more than one of them? Enter the chorus effect. The chorus effect is downright cool. It can make your single acoustic guitar sound like a 12 string. It can make your single acoustic guitar sound like, well, a group of guitars. And it really just adds this wonderful body and space filling lushness to your guitar. This is great for if you're playing solo and you want your guitar to just bring a little more body, fill a little bit more space and sound even jangly. Think like Roger McGuinn 12 string stuff. The chorus is absolutely for you. One of my favorite choruses, one of my favorite acoustic guitar friendly choruses, chorus I, chorus is. I don't know, whatever the plural of chorus is, <laughs> um, is the LR Bags Align Series Chorus. Again, it's very minimal on the knobs, but each knob is extremely effective. It's not confusing at all. It's very plug and play. Let's go ahead and give it a listen. Acoustic guitar effect number five, welcome to the world of weird, the pitch shift. I should first say that pitch shifters aren't for everyone, but they can create some really cool sonic textures and lead to some really nice creative sessions. Now, what the hell is a pitch shifter? Well, a pitch shifter essentially shifts the pitch of your guitar. So you have the note you're actually playing on the guitar, and then alongside that is another note that's either up in pitch or down in pitch. And I have to say, I really like the notes down in pitch because it makes my acoustic guitar kind of sound like a bass or an acoustic bass. Now, my favorite pitch shifter is this Electro Harmonics Pitch Fork. It's really easy to use, two knobs, and well, like I said, it leads to hours and hours of creative outlet. <laughs> guitar effect number six, distortion or fuzz. As a metalhead, I had to include this effect. Having distortion or fuzz on your acoustic guitar signal seems a little odd, but it can add that right amount of dirt, that right amount of grit that allows you to add an exclamation point after whatever you're playing. If you play a lot of blues, having a little distortion or fuzz in your back pocket is actually really, really fun. And like I said, can add emphasis to whatever you're playing. Now, my favorite fuzz pedal, I opt for fuzz, not distortion, is the Cloven Hoof by Earthquaker Devices. Cloven Hoof, Cloven Hoof. I guess it depends on where you live, however you say it. Anyways, this effect, again, is easy to use, four simple knobs, and it seems to react with the acoustic guitar pretty darn well. Bonus effect, the Electro Harmonics Freeze. I wasn't quite sure which category to place this pedal in. And if I had to pick a category, it would be necessity. The Electro Harmonics Freeze allows you to play a chord and then freeze it so it drones on. 
This is a wonderful opportunity to play through a guitar solo or practice your improvisational skills without a backing track or without anybody else in the room. You simply play a chord, lock it down, it drones on, and you can play a scale in that key. Okay, so you've heard my six favorite acoustic guitar effects, plus a bonus effect that I really dig. But now I wanna hear from you. What is your favorite effect on the acoustic guitar? Go ahead and leave it in the comments below. And if you have a favorite brand, if you have a favorite specific pedal, make sure to mention that as well. After talking to many different guitar players, a ton of different guitar geeks, a whole slew of TAC members, I'm starting to notice some common stories. One of which is this. Ah, oh, yeah, I tried learning guitar some years ago and it just didn't stick. 10 years ago, I started learning guitar again and gosh, it, you know, it just didn't stick again. This time I'm learning guitar and it's actually sticking. And after hearing so many of these stories, I'm starting to realize what the secret ingredient is. And that is fun. And TAC member Marsh M has a firsthand account of this. And I have to say, she says it in such a way that, well, I think it's pretty darn relatable. Here's what she says. Well, why now, I ask myself, after the year that we've all gone through, in some way or another, it's time. Maybe someone can relate. I found Tony at a time when I had decided to learn guitar again, for the millionth time. He played acoustic, I had one of those. Tony talked about a program he was developing. TAC was formed, and I joined. I dabbled with the TAC program. After a while, I wasn't playing anymore. I was internet surfing one day and found several players whose styles of music I liked but I didn't just want someone to tell me where to put my fingers. I wanted to know why. There are great programs out there. I wouldn't deny that, but sometimes it's who you connect with. I decided to go back and try TAC again. Well, to my surprise, I hadn't canceled my TAC membership. I just forgot about it for about a year. Now we jump to 2019. I made up my mind that I wasn't going into 2020 making the same New Year's resolution. I did the daily challenge for at least 10 minutes. I revisited Fretboard Wizard, then COVID-19 happened. I completed the 30 days to play. I went back to the beginning for everything. Chords, fretting, fun. I understand the guitar fretboard. Now I know why my noodling sounds good. It's called triads. Can I play songs, my own? Songs that others recognize? Not yet, but I'll remember to have fun while trying. Tack equals fun. I'm so glad Marsh shared this because it just goes to show that every guitar geek goes through struggles one way or another. And oftentimes we lose sight of that fun and we think, gosh, something must be wrong with me. I, I just can't learn the guitar. You can learn the guitar. Just make sure that you're having fun while you're learning. I can't stress that enough. I know it sounds so simple and I know I say it a lot, but it is such a fundamental truth, a fundamental truth. <laughs> that was a dad joke. You have to have fun while you're learning the guitar. You have to have fun while you're playing the guitar. If you have fun, you will progress because you wanna keep coming back to the guitar, that thing that brings you joy. So again, thank you so much, Marsh, for sharing that. And thank you for reminding us all that, you know what, guitar should be fun. And if it is fun, you'll keep progressing. Now I wanna keep the fun train rolling. I wanna look at a guitar signal from one of our very own Acoustic Tuesday viewers, Don M down in Mill Valley, California. Yes, we're gonna hop in the Acoustic Tuesday private jet. Go ahead and slap on your seatbelt for takeoff. We're gonna be landing in Mill Valley, California. And here's what Don has to say about his guitar signal. I've been playing, buying, and selling guitars since I was about 15. My first guitar was a Sears catalog knockoff of a Gibson Hummingbird. So here's my current guitar signal starting from left to right. A 1938 Dobro rebuilt from the ground up by a Schoenberg Guitars Luthier, a 2011 Sorensen Pacifica Mandolin, a 2019 Santa Cruz H13. Skipping over to my left is a 1939 Silvertone Cowboy Guitar, a Conalea Concert Uke, a Lanui Soprano Uke, a Kamaka Pineapple Uke, a 2019 Collings O2HT, a 2007 Martin J1216 GT. Hidden behind the 12 string is a Hawaiian cigar box uke that I built. A great story goes with this one. A handmade three string dulcimer from Hinman, Kentucky, given to my father around 1970. 
The last one is a bit of a mystery. It's a Japanese auto harpish thing that my father picked up in Japan sometime in the mid 60s. Finally, I'm holding my latest acquisition, a 2020 Minerva 1935 Roy Smack Stage Master Deluxe. I just got it about a month ago. It's about as good a reproduction as I've ever seen, played, or heard. Love, love, love it. I think his current wait list is about a year or more. I'm currently under strict, if you buy one, you gotta sell one orders from the boss lady. That's all folks. Well, I wanna thank Don so much for sharing his guitar arsenal and for turning us on to a new luthier, Minerva Fretworks. In fact, a little birdie told me that at some point later today, we'll be learning a little bit more about Minerva Fretworks. Just, just rumor, I'm not sure if it's true. You'll have to stay tuned to find out. But anyways, if, you, if you're sitting there thinking, gosh, Don seems like a good guy. And I, wanna, I would like to be in Don's company. He seems like good company. So I think I should share my guitar snow on the Acoustic Tuesday Show. I'm here to encourage you to do so. All you have to do is follow three simple steps. Step number one, go to AcousticTuesday.store and pick out your favorite guitar snow shirt. Step number two, when that shirt arrives, put it on and take a picture amongst all of your guitars. And step number three, please visit AcousticLife.tv. And if you click on the submit link in the top menu, you can go ahead and submit your picture just like Don did and tell us about all of your wonderful guitars. Let's go ahead and hop in the Acoustic Tuesday time machine. We're gonna fire up that time machine and head back to Acoustic Tuesday, episode 183. Do you see it there in the distance? That's where we're going, episode 183, where I talked about the top 10 acoustic duo albums ever recorded. Now, I had to only pick 10 albums, and man, did I leave off some dandies, and the comments section was absolutely on fire. Holy smokes. <laughs> Holy smokes, fire. Anyways, I'm making all sorts of connections today. Anyways, the comments section was great. There were some wonderful recommendations in there. And after reading through some comments, I was thinking to myself, man, I, I kind of missed a couple quintessential duo albums. So let's go ahead and dig into those comments to figure out what I left off my list. The first comment comes from Rick Rutherford, and he says this, respectfully, I have to throw in Blind Faller by Mandolin Orange and Real Time by Tim O'Brien and Daryl Scott into the mix. I am embarrassed to admit that I forgot about Mandolin Orange and the duo albums that Tim O'Brien and Daryl Scott have released together. Um, I don't know why, they just didn't pop into my head. Um, but yes, Mandolin Orange is an incredible duo. In fact, they just switched their name. More on that in our uh, news section coming up. Uh, but also those duo albums by Tim O'Brien and Daryl Scott, Real Time is a great one. Um, and then there's another one called, I think we're usually a lot better than this. It's a live album. And then there's a, a third one, Memories and Moments. Uh, great albums, and I just, I can't believe I forgot about them. So uh, thank you, Rick, for, for chiming in there. Our next comment comes from Andrew Watt, and he says this, fantastic having the Spotify list, but Gillian Welch and David Rawlings? I, I got nothing. I, I, <laughs> this is another one where I just was, I was, I looked at this comment and I thought to myself, Andrew, you're right. I, I'm, I'm ashamed to admit I left off Gillian Welch and David Rawlings. Why? I don't know. I think it just goes to, I, I'm just, I kind of was leaning on what I was listening to recently and that kind of influenced my choices, but I can't believe I missed that. Harrow and the Harvest is one of my favorite albums by them, and it's a fantastic duo acoustic album. Okay, uh, another comment comes from Isidore a liar. Hopefully I said that correctly. And they just say this, Rodrigo y Gabriela. Uh, yeah, incredible acoustic duo album. I actually saw them live here in Bozeman about two years ago. Robert Ellis opened up, and Rodrigo y Gabriela were the main act, and blew my mind, another great acoustic duo um, that should have been on my list. Should This is like the, this is like the, uh, the list of Tony should have had these on his list. But ultimately the comments were a really big help because there's quite a few, probably 20 or so plus albums that are incredible in those comments. So make sure to check out episode 183. Check out those comments. I've got one more for you. This comes from Thomas Duber. D-E-U-B-E-R, oh, I hope I said that right. I never know how I'm pronouncing these things. And he says this, you left out tone poems with Tony Rice and David Grisman playing incredible guitars and mandolins from history. 
this is another one where I was like, <laughs> I read tone poems and I was like, oh, tone poems. Uh, it should have been on my list. I'm sorry I left it off. But again, if you want to know more acoustic duo albums, must listen to acoustic duo albums. Check out the 10 I mentioned in that episode, but also dig into those comments because like I said, there were some absolute dandies mentioned. Yes, now it's time for Coffee Talk. Cheers to you. This segment is also known as acoustic news you can use. In fact, I've got some real dandy items for you today. The first one comes from one of my favorite entities in the acoustic guitar world. And that is the North American guitar. From their YouTube videos, from their website, from the guitars they stock, from the knowledge that their staff has, the North American guitar is the full package. And they just released the Connoisseur, which is a digital magazine of sorts. This, you have to subscribe, you have to subscribe. I literally just subscribed a couple weeks ago. It's 30 bucks a year and it literally is the juiciest guitar information delivered to your phone or tablet. It's a digital publication. It is awesome. The photography is incredible. The interviews are awesome. The luthiers they feature are mind blowing and they feature guitars that they have in stock, kind of like the tops of the tops. These are guitars that you would see nowhere else. It's a must subscribe. I, I have no other words for it. They just launched a new website. Make sure to check that out. But bottom line, subscribe to the North American Guitar. Subscribe. Did I say subscribe? I think I meant subscribe. I know I meant subscribe. <laughs> subscribe to the North American Guitar. Subscribe to the North American Guitars Connoisseur Digital Publication. Just go to the App Store, Google Play, or whatever, however you get your apps. Uh, go to that place and look up the North American Guitar. Don't try to spell connoisseur because I can't and I couldn't find it. And then I just searched the North American Guitar. Boom, it was right there. You can also find a link to it on their website. You got to check it out. It's so cool. Speaking of things you have to check out, this next item goes right along with what we talked about at the beginning of today's episode, effects pedals. A movie was just released called That Pedal Movie. And I have to say, if you have any interest whatsoever in effects pedals and how people start effects pedals companies, you have to check this out. It's truly fascinating and gives you a glimpse into this world that I think you otherwise wouldn't get a glimpse into. What I'm noticing about effects pedals creators is that they're kind of recluses who go into their little workshops and build these amazing little wonders, these little creative metal boxes, and we know nothing about the company or the creators. Well, this movie changes that. Let's go ahead and have a look at the trailer. Ever since musical instruments were first used, they have been an extension of people's power of expression. You have to go back all the way to the beginning. People shredding guitar speakers, turning the tone knob to create sort of a moving filter. It's a sort of tale, but at its core, it's people trying new things. We're literally inventing like what rock and roll became. All the different flavors that we get from guitars has historically evolved through these things called effects pedals. There's certain pieces of music that would not be the same without the effect. I am a guitar. There it is. There was this huge explosion in pedals because there was a huge explosion in application of technologies. The internet is just expanding and expanding. Guys like me can get on there and learn how to etch a circuit board. That caused a bajillion pedal companies. When I was learning to play guitar, I was learning to play effects at the same time. A sound like that would just excite the audience so much. People started wanting to go for more organic tones again. A lot of them started as guitar players. That was the goal. You buy a box and a few transistors and a soldering iron and start a pedal company. I mean, look at us. There's, there's no business sense here. There's no talent. There's no anything. <laughs> businesses just kind of happen without really meaning for it to. Like, oh my God, we have a business. That was uh, about the time that I had Mike Matthews' picture on the center of a dartboard. <laughs> you have literally thousands of one-person operations across the globe. It expands what people are able to do with music. Those are my instruments. It's crazy for me to wrap my head around Aerosmith or High on Fire using something that I designed in my basement. I want to be talked about as an innovator. The possibilities are absolutely vast, if not endless. 
I think pedals have been completely integrated into musical instruments. This is a revolution. Man, you know, what a world they created. Do you remember Don M's guitar snow, the one we looked at just a little bit ago? He had a guitar in there that was a Minerva guitar, and it was a recreation of a 1935 Roy Smeck Stage Deluxe. I think I have that right from memory. Anyways, you need to know about Minerva guitars. Don was completely right. Talk about a luthier who makes faithful replications of some I'll say oddball vintage instruments. In fact, you're about to hear one right now, brought to you by none other than the North American guitar. There's a double O Minerva tone that Carl Miner is playing in this clip, and its tone, I think if you closed your eyes, you'd think you were hearing a guitar from the 20s or 30s. You gotta listen to it, here it is. Do you ever wonder how raw wood is processed for guitars? Let me add to that question. Do you ever wonder how legendary raw wood is processed for guitars? Meaning you hear of these, these train tunnels with these legendary logs that are used for guitars. Think like Tunnel 13 Redwood. Or these bridges from Yosemite National Park that they reclaim the wood and they're using it for guitars. Do you ever wonder how that wood is actually processed? Well, Allied Luthery just got wood from Brown's Trestle. It's called Brown's Trestle Redwood. And this is, again, a legendary piece of wood that I believe was used for a bridge, and I found footage of them actually processing it. I'm a guitar geek, I think it's cool, and I think you'll think it's cool too. Let's have a look. One more piece of news for you today, and it comes from Iris Guitars. All of us guitar geeks need to send a huge hearty congratulations to Iris Guitars, who just completed their 100th instrument. It features a Hollywood top that is painted. It's a gorgeous guitar. You got to check it out. You have to lay your eyes upon it. And the story behind it is incredible. It was actually built for Adam from Iris Guitar's dad. And here's what he has to say about it. We are well over that serial number, but wanted a special guitar for number 100. It had the royal treatment with top, back, and side purflings. Top, back, and sides are made from Hollywood, and it is damn near perfect. The top is perfectly quartered and shows amazing medullary rays. Custom made for my father for his 80th birthday. Love you, Dad. Couldn't have made it here without you. And on that note, I believe it's a great time to end the Acoustic Tuesday show. One quick snippet of news that I'll expand upon in next week's episode of Acoustic Tuesday. Mandolin Orange just changed their name to Watch House. I know I brought them up earlier on today's show when I was talking about the comments, and I wanted you to know that they just released a new song under that new band name. Watch House. The song is entitled Better Way. In fact, I'll dive into that a little bit more next week and some details surrounding that, but I did want to mention that before I let you go for the day. I want to thank you so much for joining me today, and before I let you go, let's go ahead and take a sneak peek into next week's Acoustic Tuesday show. Next week, we'll be talking to Towns Van Zant. You're thinking, Tone, how is that possible? Well, we're going to compile six lessons from Towns Van Zant on songwriting, and I have to say, I had so much fun digging through Towns Van Zandt interviews for this episode. You're gonna really dig it. If you're a songwriter, if you're a lover of songs, if you're a lover of lyrics, if you wanna write songs yourself, next week's episode is a must watch. It's must watch Acoustic Guitar Geek TV. And on that note, I should leave you for today. Again, thank you so much for joining me today. Remember, you can catch the Acoustic Tuesday show every single Tuesday here on YouTube at 10 a.m. Mountain Time. Again, thank you for watching. Thank you for being a guitar geek. And remember, your guitar success, your guitar progress, however you define it, is directly related to your guitar routine. So please invest time in your guitar routine and make sure to have fun every day that you play. Remember Marsh that I talked about, the TAC member who reminded herself that guitar should be fun? She's having fun, she's playing every day, and of course, she's progressing. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next Tuesday on the Acoustic Tuesday Show. Cheers.